Today we're going to talk about herbicides, pesticides, fungicides, chemicals you need to eliminate before they eliminate you. And we've got a special little experiment that we're going to start with today. I think that's going to be very, very effective. Now, if you recall, way back in our lessons, we talked about toxins from chemical chemical agents like herbicides, I'm just going to put pesticides, fungicides. Now, <clears throat> what these things do is these are chemicals that interrupt your enzymatic potential. In other words, the amount of workers you have in your body. Remember, enzymes are re responsible for everything to thinking to blinking running your heart, running your organs, cleaning out toxins, making your liver, make your kidneys work. Everything requires enzymes. So <clears throat> going back here, if we look, why do they use chemicals? So here's a little bug, okay, a little, little bug, and he likes to eat the vegetables. Well, what happens is they spray an oil-based pesticide, herbicide, or fungicide on here, and this little guy eats that, and guess what? He dies. And he dies because his enzymatic potential got destroyed from these chemicals. Now, the question is, how much of this do you need in your life before this starts doing extreme damage to you? And I can't answer that question, but it makes sense to me that if a little bit will kill this bug, how much of that over 5, 10, 15, 20, 30, 40, 50 years or a lifetime of this building up inside our system can affect us? So let's go to our little experiment here. So what we're going to do is I'm going to take some tomatoes that we've got here, and I'm going to show you how to eliminate these and how not to. So I'm going to put some tomatoes in each one of these containers. So what we're going to do, it's about the same amount. I'll put that out of the way. We're going to take some tap water. I took the liberty to take some tap water here, and we're going to do this. Most people will wash their vegetables, hoping they get the dirt and chemicals off here. So we're going to take that, fill that right up, and wash that. Now, I've made a very special type of water, which is uh, a very high pH. This is 11.5 pH water. You wouldn't drink this water per se, um, but it is used as an agent to remove herbicides, pesticides, and fungicides. One of the reasons why I use an ionizer, and to find out more about that, go to our website or go to that special link that we had in an earlier lesson. So I'm going to pour some of this special water inside here. Just so you know, this is not some weird chemical or anything like that. So we've got that in there. So you can see this is just, you know, just H2O, okay? Not something that's going to poison you or anything like that. So not that you'd normally drink it, but we just wanted to kind of show you that I'm not creating some hocus pocus, that it is water, it's not a chemical. So we're going to let those soak for just a minute. And then I'm going to show you something that I learned about about eight years ago that absolutely blew my mind. Now, going back to our experiment here, I'm going to take some sesame seed oil. I'm going to put this oil in here. And remember, you might remember this chemistry experiment from way back in our chemistry classes when they said water and oil don't mix. So when they spray the, your vegetables with these chemicals, they use an oil-based chemical. So let, let's talk about that. They're going to use an oil-based chemical. Oh, chemical agent. You know, one of these asides. <laughs> and from that, we're going to, th they, they spray the vegetables and it's, you know, it kills the bugs. But when rain comes or the irrigation that they use at the farm, guess what happens? We put the water on that vegetable. What's going to happen here? O water and oil what? don't mix. We learn this specific density of water. So you can see this for the camera. You can see that the oil is rising as we would expect with normal H2O. Now with the ionization machine, we're able to make this specialized water. Use uh, ionization and a combination of saline in order to make this high a pH. And... We're going to put this together. Water and oil. Look at this. Wow. Water and oil do mix. 
Isn't that amazing? I mean, when I saw this for the first time, I was like completely blown away because basically it went against all of the chemistry that I had learned in school. You know, all my, all my training, they didn't, teach, they didn't teach me that stuff. So I was like, well, what's going on here? Basically, we we're able to change the structure of the water in a way that makes the, the water more permeable to oil. Now, how does that, you know, okay, that's a cool party trick, Wade, but what does that mean? Well, if we're washing these vegetables, so we take these tomatoes, okay, these are the ones that were washed in regular tap water, okay? This was actually filtered tap water. It didn't even have chlorine in it. Normally, if we had chlorine, it would take the chlorine and soak it into the tomato. That's a whole other thing. And then here is the tomatoes washed in the 11.5. And then we didn't let those sit very long. But look at the difference. You can see here that we have chemicals or some kind of, what is this stuff? We've got this green liquid and over here, same tomatoes out of the same one, like the same container, but one has clear water and the one washed in the 11.5 pH water made from the ionization machine that we use takes this away and we've got this agent. So what happened? What, what, what happened here? Basically, what happened is we were able to emulsify the oil-based chemicals that was on these tomatoes in the store. And by doing that, we were able to get them off the fruits and vegetables that were here, you know, it's the conventionally grown fruits and vegetables, and remove the chemicals. There it is. The fact that, I mean, here's the reality. If you're not doing an 11.5 wash, for your fruits and vegetables, you're eating these chemicals if it's conventionally grown, okay? These are going inside your body, and we already know that they'll kill the little bugs. How many of these is it going to take to do damage to you? Is it really worth taking that chance? I certainly don't think so. Regular tap water, as you see, or even bottled water, or, you know, all these different types of water, water's becoming a big industry now, doesn't have the capacity to do this, okay? But with a simple technology that you can install in your home in about two minutes, you can have this technology. It does a whole lot of things. We'll talk about it in another lesson, but more importantly, you can get these chemicals out of your life. You can also use this 11.5 as a cleaner in your house, so you don't need those type of chemicals as well. In fact, I wash my clothes with it. I just add a little essential oil with that 11.5, and I'm able to wash my clothes with that without using the phosphate chemicals, which are damaging to our environment. So trying to make myself and my family more and more chemical-free just makes a lot of sense. So again, the other thing a lot of people say, well, Wade, what about those little spray things that you get at the store to get that stuff off. Well, to me, it's like, why would I use another chemical to remove a chemical from the fruits and vegetables? It just doesn't make any sense. So this is the way to go. Um, if you want more information of how you can get one of these units, of course, just click on the link that we've added to this particular lesson and start eating this. And by the way, when you taste these tomatoes, the taste of these tomatoes are completely different. So if I take this one, mm, tastes extraordinary. Tastes like a tomato, right? I take this one, it tastes like a, it tastes like a bunch of chemicals. I mean, believe me, seeing is believing. So uh, I hope you enjoyed this little experiment about how to get these out of your life. Ideally, you know, number one, order organic. If you can't do that, you definitely want to get an ionization system that it makes an 11.5 pH. We have the, the companies that we recommend uh, on our site. And get this stuff out of you because there's no place for it. So I hope you enjoyed today's lesson. You've been coming along really far, so I want to congratulate you. We're getting into the very, very, very final one, but some of the stuff that we're going to talk about is really, really key, so stick around, and we'll see you on the next lesson.